This video is about red camera. Wow. I'm going to show you this, all this, tens of thousands of dollars of camera, plus your career, plus your work, worth $50 at most if you're lucky, according to red. Only $1 if you're not. So sit tight and please refrain from standing up during the ride. This has no stop button. I need to familiarize your ears to these voices. Please take a listen. Beginning with the witness. Jim Gennard. Greg Nelson, counsel for Mr. Gennard and for Red.com LLC. That was the voice of Mr. Greg Nelson, the counsel for Mr. Jim Gennard and Red.com. You don't see him here in this picture, but if you could, if the frame was bigger, you could have seen him sitting about this place. This is Mr. Jim Jennard. He's the founder and CEO of Red.com, and he's the name inventor in Red's patent. Jim Jennard. And this is Mr. Gregory Nelson. Greg Nelson, counsel for Mr. Jennard and for Red.com LLC. You are doing great. This, for example, is a list of legal actions Red has taken for trademarks. They have even gone after a company that is making infrared cameras for hunters and animal scientists because infrared has red in it. In it? And there are quite a few of them. And this is a list of lawsuits between red and others. Interestingly, there are a couple of common points between all these cases. One is that for some reason, red loves to bring the legal actions into South California no matter where the other party is based in. Another point are the names. This is a case between Red.com Inc., a Washington corporation, and Sony Corporation of America and Sony Electronics. Gregory L. Wicks, Chandler G. Wicks, and my personal favorite, Mr. Gregory Nelson, are the attorneys for plaintiff. This is versus Nokia USA and Nokia Technology. Once again, the names are Gregory Nelson and Chandler Wicks of Wicks Nelson. This is Red versus Fiber Guide Industries. Once again, the names are Gregory L. Wicks, Gregory K. Nelson, and Chandler Wicks. Who are these people? Quite interestingly, there's not much digital footprint of them on the internet. There is no weblog, no articles, no pictures that you can directly associate it with them. They seemingly don't have any other clients, no website, not even a logo that is associated with them. But because they probably wanted to hide, it doesn't mean that you cannot learn about them online. Red European headquarters is Red Europe Limited that is based in the UK. The UK government runs a section called Companies House from which you can get companies information. Looking at the list of Red Europe officers and directors in Company's House, you can see that Mr. James Jennard is listed as the director of this company. Mr. Chandler G. Wicks is also a director. And here is another familiar name, Mr. Gregory L. Wicks, also a listed director. This is the information from Red.com Incorporation from the Washington Secretary of State. Here, apart from Mr. Jim Jennard and Jared Land, you can see Mr. Greg Wicks, also listed as an official governor. As you can see, unlike many other technology companies where their management is built around scientists, engineers, or designers, Red Management is instead built around lawyers, strongly worded letters, suppression, and lawsuits. But luckily enough, like the other 200 and something countries in the world, the United States of America has enforceable regulations in place that are applicable to even the most brazen lawyers, such as the United States Uniform Commercial Court, or UCC for short. Under the United States contract law, we read that the law governing transactions involving the sales of goods has become highly standardized nationwide through widespread adoption of the Uniform Commercial Court. Under the law, a formation of an agreement requires mutual consent, also known as ratification and meeting of the minds. By law, an offer is a display of willingness by a promiser. Similarly, to form a lawful agreement, a willful acceptance is required. 
under the Uniform Commercial Code were it that a definite and a seasonable expression of acceptance is required to operate as an acceptance. We also read that the Uniform Commercial Code or UCC is a comprehensive set of laws governing all commercial transactions in the United States. The terms will be enforced in the same way by the courts of every American jurisdiction. This Uniform Commercial Code covers multiple bases. Article 2 that is approved in 1951 governs the sales of goods. The code makes several types of agreements unacceptable and invalid, such as where one party has an unfair advantage over the other, or if one party attempts to reduce their own liability in a breach of contract and make the other party responsible for damages. Now that we know some of this, let's see how red treats you when you invest tens of thousands of dollars to just buy a single red camera brain and become part of their family. For example, this is Red Firmware License Agreement. Red Firmware License Agreement is important because as soon as you fire up your camera, the firmware kicks in and you need the firmware for the camera to function. It says important, read carefully. This firmware license agreement or FLA is a legal agreement between you, either an individual or a single entity, and red.com LLC or red. Sorry, some long readings, but the fun part starts from here. Disclaimer of warranty. You expressly acknowledge and agree that the use of the software is at your sole risk. The software is provided as is and without warranty of any kind. Red and its licenses expressly disclaims and makes no warranty, conditions, representations, or terms express or implied, whether by statute, common law, customs, usage, or otherwise, as to the software or any component thereof, including but not limited to non-infringement of third-party rights, integration, merchantability, satisfactory quality, or fitness for any particular purpose. Red and its licenses do not warrant that the functions contained in the software will meet your requirements or that the operation of the software will be correct. Furthermore, Red and its licenses do not warrant or make any representations regarding the use of the results of the use of the software in terms of its correctness, accuracy, reliability, performance or otherwise. No oral or written information or advice given by Red or its licenses or their respective authorized representative shall create a warranty. Red and its licenses provide no warranty that any device, software, or data will not be damaged by the software. You get it? Of course, no one does. Now, the plot thickens. Limitation of liability. Red and its licenses will not be liable for any incidental, special, indirect, exemplary, or consequential damages for breach of any warranty, breach of contract, negligence, strict liability, or any other legal theory related to this software. It basically says that they will not be liable for the breach of their own warranty or contract. Red and its licenses will not be liable for any loss of profit, loss of revenue, loss of data, loss of use of the software, or any associated hardware or device downtime and user's downtime, cost of procurement of substitute goods or services, or any claim or demand against you by any other party. Even if Reds and its licenses have been advised of the possibility of such damages. In no event shall Reds or its licenses aggregate liability under or in connection with this agreement be greater than 50 US dollars. <laughs> I'm not sure about you, but it's very hard to imagine an agreement that could be any more one-sided and lacking in mutuality. First Red attempts to disclaim any liability under the sun, under this agreement, under any legal theory at all, even for breaching its own contract. Next, even if some liability could somehow slip through all those Red disclaimers, Red limits its liability to no more than $50. And good luck getting that $50 too. This is what exactly the law is created to prevent, to protect people from hunters like this. You acknowledge that these limitations are reasonable and further agree that these limitations shall apply notwithstanding any failure of essential purpose of any limited remedy. Crystal clear. 
Yeah, you might say, I don't care about this part, I only like their sensor. So let me show you more. Unlike other digital cinema cameras, which need early morning prayer and hope to operate, RED cameras require software and firmware to operate. You have reviewed and agreed to the terms and conditions contained in the RED Camera Module Software License Agreement and the RED Firmware License Agreement, the one we just looked at. No, you haven't. You've been there for something else. And while you were there, they adhered a bunch of other agreements to you without you even knowing that, let alone being able to understand their terms or negotiate them. Same here for trade. You might be sending in your camera for a trade and RED says, RED cameras require software and firmware to operate. You have reviewed and agreed to the terms and conditions contained in the RED camera or module software license agreement and the RED firmware license agreement. No, you haven't. And that FLA is not atypical. All of the agreements which RED asserts are similarly lopsided. For instance, RED website agreement says your sole remedy against RED for dissatisfaction with the site or any content is to stop using the site. In the RED SDK says in no event will RED be liable to you for any damages, claims or costs or whatsoever arising from this agreement and or your use of the software or any components thereof. And if you think you had enough, then eat this. Your eligible camera must be in functional, good working order at the time of trade-in. If your eligible trade-in camera is found to be non-functional or not in good working order, RED may charge you the full price of the new camera without credit for your trade-in camera, minus one dollar. Did you get it? Let me clarify it for you. When you send your camera for trade-in, when your beloved camera is not in your position, if RED decides to claim that it wasn't in a good order, you are screwed. And if you think your camera was fine, there is no way on earth I can think of that you can prove otherwise. All you get for your camera is one dollar. That's why you should be your own warrior. Let's see what law has to say about this. According to the law, unconscionable contracts are ones that are so one-sided and unfair that they become legally unenforceable. One party has no choice but to accept the contract, usually because of differences in bargaining power. This type of contract would unfairly benefit the person who drafted it. According to the law, even if a contract has all the legal elements, it might still be deemed unenforceable if a portion of it violates legal doctrine. The contract must be unconscionable at the time it is drafted to be declared void and see that the person who drafted it is punished. What is unconscionability doctrine? The doctrine is a legal principle designed to protect parties from a variety of issues. The court will apply this doctrine to every contract case, not just ones that deal with the purchase of goods. And what makes a contract unconscionable? Unequal bargaining power. This is where one party has an unfair advantage over the other. Undue influence. When one side uses unreasonable pressure to get the other person to agree to the contract. Limiting warranty. If one party attempts to reduce their own liability in a breach of contract and make the other party responsible for damages and unfair surprise. One party includes a term or terms without the other party's knowledge and it is outside their scope of expectation. In the legal dictionary, unconscionability is defined as a conduct that is unfair or one-sided so as to provide more of a benefit to one party over another. According to the dictionary, in effect, the person exhibiting the unconscionable conduct is stealing from or otherwise taking advantage of the other person. Unconscionable conduct can be punished as either a criminal fraud or with a civil action. A contract is more likely to be found to be unconscionable if it contains both unfair bargaining practices and one-sided terms. There's no shortage of either of them in red legal documents. Unconscionability must exist at the time the contract is drafted in order for the contract to be declared void 
and for the drafter to be punished accordingly. In other words, it shouldn't happen later on in time. It should be from the get-go, like the red ones. And there are two types of unconscionability, procedural unconscionability and substantive unconscionability. The procedural unconscionability is when one party has overwhelming power over the other. The substantive unconscionability is wherein the terms of the contract themselves would raise a red flag as to the contract being suspect, provided the person reading those terms knew what to look for. The law doesn't require you, a filmmaker, a camera owner, to know what to look for. Nah, it's not going to happen. It never happened to anyone. Red people, red service are so nice and so caring and they are so cute. This is from a shooter, from a red owner, a member of the community. He says, I was trying to recover some footage off of a 512 gigabyte red minimag, 480 as we know, using red's red on that software and my drive stopped working. So I sent it into red, letting them know it had been tested and the drive inside was faulty and I wanted the drive inside replaced. They quoted me $1,655.25 to replace the internal SSD and connector board. And now we all know what is inside that red minimum. So obviously he asked for a breakdown. The breakdown was 512 gigabyte solid state drive for $1,050, Red Mini Mac connector board for $215, and one and a half hour labor at $125 per hour, that is $187.50, for a total of $1,452.50. Look how caring they are. They also offered a 25% discount because of COVID-19, reducing the price to $1,089.37. Obviously, he was shocked. He said that he was aware of the cost of the internals. So he was given the email for Red's legal rep, Chandler Wicks. He says, I told him the situation and he wrote me off and said I was just whining about the price of Red Minimag and to have a lawyer contact him. See? and have a lawyer contact him. So I told the red rep that I wanted to follow through with the repair, but I wanted three things. See if it's not unreasonable, it's very reasonable things. One, he wanted a more detailed description of the parts. Two, he says I wanted a log of what was being done in that one and a half hour of repair. And three, I wanted the old pieces removed from my red mini Mac, returned with my repaired car. He already paid for them. This is his property. He says, I didn't hear back from Red Service Tech. And then I heard from Chandler Wicks, who told me that because I threatened Red with legal action, they would not be able to perform any services for me. And as an example of putting pressure to buy into something, we read that when I was quoted, they made sure to acknowledge that the cost of a repair would be more than buying a new card, and they were very encouraging to just purchase a new card. So whereas a new card price is less, the cost for repair of the old card is quoted to be more than buying a new card. According to the law, there are a few circumstances where a supplier's refusal to supply is breaking the law. One is misusing their market power. One other of those circumstances is acting unconscionably. Let's go back to legal dictionary to see what unconscionable act is. The dictionary says unconscionable conduct is when one party deliberately misrepresents the facts to deprive someone else of something valuable, such as money or property. In effect, the person exhibiting the unconscionable conduct is stealing from or otherwise taking advantage of the other person. And let me repeat that this unconscionable conduct can be punished as either a criminal fraud or with a civil action, because it is a fraudulent activity, especially if it contains both unfair bargaining practices and one-sided terms. This is how red treats you when you invest in it. And the best remedy probably is not to feed the beast to begin with. So to recap, based on red legal, if you are a red owner, according to red, your red camera, your investment worth $50 max when red ruins it, even knowingly, and that's coming from their factory where you have no control and no say. And your red camera worth only $1 if red says you ruined it, even if you didn't. 
and you have no say. It's in the agreement. And according to the agreement, you are pre-bounded to several agreements, even if you didn't know, and you most likely didn't know you were. So according to Red Legals, you dare to ask questions, services will be suspended, supply suspends, you will need lawyers. And guess what? Red directors are professional lawyers. Yours aren't. Well, probably. All red agreements are invalid by the laws of the land. I'm going to try to explain how red is formed and operates. See if you can follow me and you will be amazed. This is a certificate for Red Europe Limited. Red Europe Limited is probably the largest and most important red business hub outside of the United States that is registered in England. Based on documents, 250,000 shares of Red Europe Limited is solely owned by another company called Red Sales Corp. Red Sales Corp itself is a Nevada company, again owned by Mr. Jim Jenner, listed as its president. The same Red Sales Corp in state of California registered as a foreign company in business of camera sales. Mr. Jared Land is listed as its chief executive officer. And here, Mr. Chandler Wicks, the director of Red Europe Limited, is the named agent for Red Sales Corp, with his address in Solano Beach in California. Red Sales Corp itself exists in Nevada, this time with Mr. Chandler Wicks registered as an agent with his address in Las Vegas. And apart from Mr. Jim Jernar, other officials are Mr. Brent Carter and Mr. Jared Lang. And here we will see another familiar name, this time Mr. Gregory Wicks, listed as a director with his Solona Beach address again. From the office of the Secretary of State of the State of California, on 7th of July 2006, Red.com Incorporation, that exists under the laws of Washington State, registered as a foreign company with Mr. Jim Jenner as its owner president. This time with Mr. Gregory Wicks, the director of Sales Corp, as its agent. You remember this agent is also a director at Red Europe. This is July 7, 2006. In the state of Washington, Red.com Inc. incorporated about a week before that filing in California. Red.com incorporated in Washington on 29th of June. 2006. We remember that Red had booth and an ordering station at NAB 2006. NAB 2006 took place from April 24th to April 27th at Las Vegas Convention Center. In other words, between 24th of April 2006 to 29th of June 2006, Mr. Jenner has been collecting money for Red over two months before Red.com Inc even incorporated. Let me use these couple of images to remind you of the sales state at Red Tent at NAB 2006. I want to go back to page eight. Um, it says, eight? Yeah, yeah, page eight. Looks like a, two gentlemen shaking hands. Uh, who are those, by, by the way? Uh, Chris Petrillo and Ted Shulowitz on the left. So Ted's on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other fellow is Chris... Uh, Chris Petrillo. Are they still with the company by any chance? No, he, he never really was. He came over and helped out. He worked, mm -hmm. at, he worked at Oakley and he just came over to help out with that, with that booth. Why does it say sold out? That was an old thing that my, my partner at Oakley said, you always close out the show with sold out signs. <laughs> Whether you were sold or not. Whether you, it doesn't matter. And we, we didn't have any, you know, limit to what we thought was, you know, the first amount of deposit, so. Not even sold out was real. Now, let's take a look at Red.com Inc. status in the state of California. This is not Red Sales Corp. This is Red.com. For Red.com Inc., Mr. Jared Land is listed as Chief Executive Officer and Mr. Brent Carter listed as Secretary. You remember Mr. Brent Carter was a director at Red Sales Corp. We see Mr. Brent Carter's name in a few other places. Here, for instance, Mr. William Carter, 
listed as a manager of another company, this time using another part of his name. From his deposition in Genitech case, we'll see the full name for Mr. Carter is William Brent Carter. So he decided for some companies he's using Brent Carter, and for some other companies he will use William Carter. And this company happens to be Landmine Media LLC. Landmine Media is the owner of RedUser.net that operates for the benefit of Red. Pretty confusing, right? Why do you think it is? Why do you think they created this puzzle web of companies? If it is confusing for you, imagine how confusing it could be for the Lady Justice and for the tax office. None of this is accident. This web is designed in this way, and I don't think for any decent reason. Now, everything about this web of multi-million dollar companies is about to drastically change starting from March 2017. On 3rd of March 2017, Jared Land shared this lawsuit against Ginny Tech and Bruce Royce in a couple of places. And these are only some of the reactions. Amongst others, luckily we have a smart one. I'd say probably the smartest in every single room. Uh, an unaware red user asked this question. Sorry, but what exactly is the crime here? Mr. Phil Holland says he's giving a short answer. A series of accusations. Patent infringement, trademark infringement, false designation of origin, unfair competition, false advertising, unjust enrichment, breach of contract. What a super villain I am. And that's probably just a half a day job. He then carries on to say, proprietary technology is often ripped off and often to the determinant of the company of origin and occasionally their customers, in this case, both. And like an experienced class five rapid drafter, he carries on, while all sorts of folks are using off-the-shelf media, I see enough locally and via social networks of CF-related things to never, ever want to touch them. I've also experienced car failure on my other cameras that aren't mm, red, which is a facepalm moment. And then he says, I'm down for saving a buck. And it's been said in here many times within this thread. But there is a balancing act between reliability and cost. Focusing more on quality rather than saving a buck at the end of the day will save you a lot of headaches and perhaps even your job. I shall leave this picture here as a reminder of his extensive knowledge or his extensive decency. Just down there in the same thread in reply to a person who says, I have no first-hand experience with Genie products in combination with red cameras. We've used red Minimax. He says, it's just a difficult place to be these days because the people who are pushing information out this raft with holes in it have often never been on a raft before, despite coming off like rather experienced class 5 rapid rafters. Didn't I tell you? I'm just trying to keep people from drowning. Oh, that reminder picture of his extensive knowledge when he was pushing information out of the raft was just on the other post. Um, but he carries on to say... I'm not going back a year in time hunting for this, but the dude who got one, I think on Scarlet W, at the time had insane issues. There were at least two others. BMD isn't using a unique interface, nor writing the same way. Different words entirely. Now, an open question for you, Mr. Holland. What is the exact difference between the Blackmagic Design Camera's interface and Red Camera interface? You're gonna need that information. The trial date is fast approaching and I would hate if you miss any part of it. 
because he's the smartest person in the thread, and because Mr. Phil Holland has seen enough of bad off-the-shelf media and CF-related things to never ever want to touch them, never ever. Let's see how he chooses between reliability and cost for a professional camera. Do I have the prototype here? We've, so we've been working on Komodo for off and on just after Jim retired the first time, I think in 2015, <laughs> you know, when he was... I, I call them Timmy ribs now. <laughs> yeah, I should rename them to the... I'm going to rename those things to the Tim ribs. Hey, I think that name's going to stick. In the red world, our range is typically like 250 to 3200 with extended up to like 6400 and 12800 if you need to. So right now the camera is shipping at 800 uh, and that's our base ISO. And generally what that is, is just a good starting spot uh, in terms of you to choose your exposures. If you want cleaner images, you go to a lower ISO setting. If you want uh, more texture or you know more low light or more highlight data, you know, higher ISO setting. I, it's just crazy because I think, I don't know what happened with this native ISO term, but like as someone who's actually been a part of a team who's built a camera, no one, no one is actually asking about the native ISO of the sensor. So we learn that Komodo is being built since 2015, and Mr. Phil Holland has been part of the team building the camera, and yet Komodo records red code on off-the-shelf CF memory cards. The very same red code that Jared Land once told us requires a specific type of memory card that Red invents and a specific type of firmware to be able to accept red code recordings that Jared said is very different to what a normal SSD is programmed for. Either this red code didn't require any specific memory and we have been lied to for years, or Red Komodo should not be able to record red code on off-the-shelf memory card because they don't have that specific firmware in them, do they? See how self-defying a liar can be? He lied once and he lied again and he lied on the top of that until there was no other way than to forget about all those millions of dollars of testing and accept the fact that this requires nothing more than a normal memory card. Bear with me as surprising things are to be unfolded before your eyes. On 31st of July 2016, referring to a recording media for RED camera, Mr. Jared Land says that RED is a patent holder. He reiterates the fact that we invented something. Someone is saying they have stole it. And he says, lawyers will deal with these guys doing this. On 3rd of March, 2017, Mr. Jared Land publishes their lawsuit against Ginny. On the document, you can see that the complaint was actually filed on the 2nd of March, 2017. And again, you'll see those old familiar names, Mr. Gregory Nelson and Mr. Chandler Wicks as attorneys for plaintiff. You can see this complaint was prepared in such a rush that they didn't even get their basic facts right, such as calling defendant Genie USA Inc. That is an unknown, unrelated company to me. And within this artfully drafted complaint, Red asserted this patent. Red is the owner by assignment of US patent application with that serial number, which will issue on March 14, 2017. So Red is the owner of US patent application and not an actual patent, which will be issued in the future. What is the value of a patent application? What is the ownership of a patent application? When you apply for a bank account, are you going around and say you are an owner of a bank account application? And this is the patent application in question. This application was first filed on October 13th, 2016 and was first listed and published on 2nd of February, 2017. Even on 14th of March, when it was granted, it was a patent for video camera containing red code. When Jared Land in July, 2016 accused me of infringing their patent, not only the patent didn't exist, but also it wasn't even applied for. 
until several months later when they applied for this patent only to sue me. Even through the expensive fast track, it took Red eight months to sort out this patent. It was a patent for a video camera. If you think eight months is a long time to accuse someone prior to fact, let me take you 30 months later, January 2019. If you don't know anything about body language, please at least use your common sense. I'd like to hand you what the court reporter has marked as Exhibit 1. Counsel? For the record, uh, this is a copy of United States Patent Number 9596385. That is the patent that is uh, at issue in this lawsuit. Question to you, Mr. Gennard, is have you ever seen this patent before? If my name is on it, then I have seen it. Well, uh, I'm not sure that really answers my, my question. Uh, the question is, have you, do you recall ever seeing this patent before, this one? Uh, yes. When? <clears throat> uh, maybe 20 minutes ago. So the very first time, <clears throat> excuse me, you've seen the U.S. patent number 9596385, which for the record I'll be referring to during this examination as the 385 patent. The very first time you saw the 385 patent was 20 minutes ago. The very first time? Yes. Oh, I saw it when we filed it. Okay, now the story's changing. So No, 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 objection. Miss State's testimony. You asked the first time he saw this patent, not the first time he saw the application. No, I asked him, the, the record is clear. I asked him when he saw the patent. Right. And the first time he saw this patent, he's answered. Uh, if you're talking no, about well, no, Mr. Mr. Nelson, you know how this works. Different. You're coaching the witness. You can object uh, on the basis of mischaracterizing prior testimony, but you cannot tell the witness what to say. Then don't badger him. My question to you, sir, is when did you first see this 385 patent? I'm not sure. It could have been 20 minutes ago. It could have been after... after um, Could have been 20 minutes ago, it could have been after we received it, I don't re recall. You know, I've always been transparent. You know, I've always, always been transparent. You know, I've 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 always been transparent. Wait, don't go anywhere yet. What Mr. Transparent failed to tell you was that on the 10th of February 2017, about one month before Red lawsuit, it was in fact Genitech and Rolls Royce who first filed their complaint against Red.com and Janet Land in the state of Washington, where Red.com Inc. is incorporated. This first file complaint covers a few claims, such as claim for false advertising, unfair competition, product disparagement and trade libel, tortious interference, unfair competition based on Consumer Protection Act, and some others, including defamation. This complaint of Genie vs. Red still stands, with its trial date set to be in December 2020 in Seattle, Washington State, for which I wish to invite all the filmmakers to attend for the trial of this biggest scandal in the history of modern cinema. Red and Mr. Land successfully tried to pretend that it was only Red who sued Jenny Tech. And here is the surprise. In March 2017, a few people reposted Jenny Tech's Facebook post. In that post, Jenny Tech said, even big companies can go down by some simple stupid mistakes of their managers. Those who will do it right are the ultimate winners. That user said, getting cocky? So at that point, Ginny were called clearly insane, crazy and mad. And there is this red user who says he loves it. And he wishes me personally to lose all my money. Unfortunately, these are the sort of people you are in community with when you join red. At about the same time, red lawyers requested us to extend their time to respond. They said they needed that time to find a local council in Washington to be able to respond properly. We have accepted that request out of courtesy. For example, on 9th of March, in this letter, Mr. Greg Nelson says, 
This letter serves as confirmation of your courtesy to extend DefendantRed.com Inc.'s response to your client's complaint from the initial response date of March 28, 2017 to April 27, 2017. That's one month extension given. 28th of March, Red's due date to respond to the complaint was the end of March. He carries on, in the meantime, Red will obtain a local counsel. Thank you again for your courtesy. Signed by Greg Nelson. But upcoming events are about to take a different turn. In my view, with the information out, Red feared a huge class action. On 31st of March 2017, Mr. Jarl Land had to sign this document about Red.com Inc. By signing this document, he confirmed the corporation hereby surrenders its right and authority to transact interstate business in the state of California. The corporation hereby revokes its designation of agent for services of process in California. At the same time, on 31st of March 2017, in the Office of Secretary of State in Washington, Red.com Inc. is being marked as inactive. Red is dissolved. Red.com Inc., this multi-million company, has been taken out of the picture. Red.com Inc. is no more. On the same date, a new company, Red.com LLC, is being registered in the state of Nevada. And for the first time in the recorded history, the registered agent for that company is not Chandler Wicks or Gregory Wicks. It's another company, CSC Services of Nevada. And based on this document, that multi-million dollar Red.com Incorporation is dissolved to form this limited liability company with capital of zero dollar. Of zero dollar. Nothing. No. And if that is not enough, on the list of officials, we see Jim Jannard and Gregory Wicks and interestingly, Jared Land is not a listed official in this new company. Oh, and did I forget to tell you that about the same time we received this email from Red's attorney, Mr. Greg Nelson. It basically says, while Red.com is a Washington corporation, it is not the owner-operator of RedUser.net. Those accusations, if true at all, are more appropriate against the owner of RedUser.net. I suggest we would not oppose a motion by you to amend and substitute the true owner of RedUser.net in lieu of Red. Signed by Gregory Nelson. There are a lot more. Want more? Like and subscribe. And do not forget to share. It's painless. 